Um, okay, the first order of business is on the chairing. Uh, actually, our next two. The first one is for 100 Grist Mill Road. And Dave, 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 I think, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah I'm, you're, the audio that I'm hearing is so broken up, I can't follow what you're saying. Same here. <laughs> Mr. Gray, maybe while uh, Is it still, still okay. broken up? Is it still broken up? Can you hear it? Bad, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we can hear something, but it isn't clear what it is. It's very difficult. Do we all want to try again? You're good. Oh, you yeah. sound good too. I, mm -hmm. when we have this on our on our Zoom calls. It's usually somebody who's connected both through their computer and on their phone, like they're somehow connected twice, and that's where you get the echo. So, I'm not sure. Well, the thing with Dave's, it's not just an echo; it's the static too. Mm. Yeah, it's interrupting kind of the audio. Right. It's definitely fixed now. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> uh -oh. Are you insulting him? He got up and walking He's out. Leaving. Oh, we lost him. I was just trying to have a little fun. <laughs> hmm. yeah, I was thinking that maybe I would recommend that maybe you take over as chair. Oh, well, I can't. I got to read. I'll, I don't know where Dave went, but I'll read the public uh, hearing application because that's our next item anyhow. So public hearing on application 20-07 of Richard Correa applicant Grist Mill Partners LLC for a special exception pursuant to Article 7 Section J of zoning regulations to allow recreational use for the premises located at 100 Grist Mill Road. G11-103-005-25 zone I2. Um, Mike, this is the one we're going to table, right? Yeah, uh, the applicant asked us to table this uh, hearing, so I just asked for a motion to table the public hearing to your next meeting. All right, well, now that we've opened it, I move that we uh, table application 20-07 until our next regular meeting. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next application is application uh, number 20-08 of Richard Correa applicant, one and three Mill Pond Partners LLC for a special exception pursuant to article seven section I of zoning regulations to allow recreational use says for the premises located at one and three uh, Mill Pond Road F 11-103-005-23, zone I-1. Thank you, can you hear me now? Oh yeah, we can hear you now. Much better. Better. Okay, defective new park, anyway. All right, so we read the, we read the public hearing, so now we can ask Rich to uh, make a presentation if that's what he wants. Sure, uh, thank you uh, for uh, hearing us. And um, as you know, I've been, you know, uh, doing commercial real estate in Simsbury for 30 years, and we faced all types of challenges. And uh, what we're going through now is perhaps the largest challenge that we've had yet. But, uh, you know, in regards to one and three uh, mill pond, uh, we have a uh, dance studio, which is uh, Tur Uh She used to be down at Simsmore Square. And then and, uh, they had to move and they had the fire down there and she ended up at the uh, North Village of Simsbury in uh, front of the uh, self-storage facilities. 
And that um, the uh, self storage industry has been doing really well. And they've asked all their people that were tenants there to leave and find a new home. So uh, we've met with Melissa uh, numerous times trying to put her into a spot. Uh, we we had a space at uh, one and three Mill Pond. It's uh, in it's in the basement. It's space that is uh, adaptable for her. They're in the building. I've spoken to both of the of the co tenants, so uh, that there's you know there won't be any interference of uh, you know music being too loud or anything like that with uh, the uh, quiet time and office use that's going on in the other on the on part of the building. And uh, we've looked at it, you know, we've looked uh, at where else could she possibly go? Where can she go quickly? And the answer is there's not a heck of a lot of options out there when you need open space like this. And uh, it's, you know, we saw it, it's an allowable use as a special exception in the I-2 zone before you tonight. And, uh, you know, we call it a recreational use. Nothing changes outside. Everything is inside the building. Uh, there's no, there won't be any seepage, doors open, it's all air conditioned, so it'll be all self-contained inside of the uh, one and three mill pond building. Thanks, Rich. Um, Mike, have we gotten any um, comments from the public? No, you did not. Okay, um, commissioners, um, comments, um, questions for Rich? Are, are they are the two buildings the 100 and one and three both in different zones no the, uh, both buildings are in uh, similar zones but we're only coming in for one and three it's it's a building that has two addresses but when you look at it it's all connected as one building it was the old uh, uh it's across um ensign bigford used to have their uh, real estate offices in there and there was a patent attorney that used to be in there years ago Vic LeBert. Vic LeBert had his offices there. Hmm. Anyway. Oh. Any other comments? Uh, just a, you know, this may be a, a minor concern, but I'm interested in whether the uh, intensity of use in terms of the number of people in the right. building is going to change with the change of use. And if that's a concern, has the fire marshal been consulted or anything like that? Yeah. Actually, uh, she would be uh, you containing less space than when uh, Hot Advisors was in there uh, with a full uh, staff of people. Similar yes. number of people? The number of people. Hmm. Other comments? Ann? Donna? No, that was my comment, so... Yeah. Okay. And I and guess the just other, to be, the other just to be sure, been notified. the parking uh, necessary for the dance studio with the drop off and pick up and all that is adequate too, uh, Rich? Yeah. It, it, uh, there's plenty of parking on the site. There's over 65 uh, parking spaces on the site. And so that's adequate. It's adequate, yes. Okay. We went over, we went over a lot of the preliminaries with uh, with Mike and town staff as best we can in these times. And yeah, it's, they uh, haven't offered any comments yet. So right. thank you. Okay. okay. No more. No public comments. Any more comments? We could uh, have a motion to close the public hearing. Kevin? Do we do we have a motion for this one, Mike? No, I, unfortunately, I, I, I did not put one in your packet. It, it's this one's pretty straightforward. Um, the the use is specially permitted. The parking for the site can support the the several users that are in the building. So, um, in talking with Rich, you know, we did not feel that there was any need for special conditions on this app on this uh, special exception. All right, is, I didn't look to see if there were special exception requirements that we have to review. There are, so, there are in our zoning regs, yes. But we you need to close the public hearing first, Kevin. All right. 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 Yeah. Motion to close the public hearing first. Yeah, I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Um, second by Bruce. Any discussion of the closing of the public hearing? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Okay, it carries six nothing. Public hearing is closed. Um, now we can discuss the um, application 20 08, um, which we just closed the public hearing on. And I believe uh, that I'm going to have zoning rigs back there. There are several uh, considerations listed in that section. Does anybody have that in front of them? Mr. Chairman, I can read the, the standards to the reg, to the commission if you want. Yes, that would be helpful. So just to, just to remember, we're still using our old regs. Your your new regs that you just approved will be effective. What page next, is it on? What page? Uh, it would be page 64 of the old regs. So it's uh, standards uh, guided for um, special exception. And you have one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, eight standards, and I'll just go over them quick. A, the need for the proposed use in the proposed location. B, the existing and future character of the neighborhood in which the use is located. C, the location of main accessory buildings in relation to another. D, the height and bulk of buildings in relation to other structures in the vicinity. E, park traffic circulation within the site, amount, location, and access to parking, traffic load, for possible circulation problems on existing streets. F, availability of water to the site and adequate disposal of sewage and stormwater. G, the location and type and display of signs, lighting, loading zone and landscaping. And H, safeguards to protect adjacent property in the neighborhood in general from, from detriment. Thank you, Mike. Any comments on any of those uh, criteria? Certainly the need for the use is there. Any other? I don't think the traffic is a big deal. Um, the there, building's not changing. There's no structure change. Right. Well, it fits no, in that area. Certainly fits in that area. There's no other um, things. It's, City water and city sewers at the building. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's that's correct. And the recreational use change actually fits the character of the neighborhood better now than uh, you know when it was originally planned to be all corporate. Hmm. Right. Can we have a motion to uh, to approve this application? Somebody want to make one? Well, I'll move to approve the application 2008 of Rich Korea applicant on one in three Mill Pond Partners LLC for a special exception pursuant to Article 7, Section I of zoning regulations to allow recreation uses for the premises located at one in three Mill Pond Road, F11 103 005 23, Zone I 1. And a second. Vote. Second by me, Donna. Second to Donna. Okay, thank you, Donna. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Okay, six, nothing that carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next item of business is we have a referral from the Board of Selectmen. And I believe that um, we have a PowerPoint presentation by the land, Trust for Public Land, is it? It's making this, who's making the presentation? So uh, I'll help, uh, Honor, there you are. Hi. You can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Honor, I'm with the Trust for Public Land. I'll be uh, tag teaming with Mike to do a presentation on the acquisition of the Meadowood um, property in North Simsbury. So um, a, just under a year ago, the, this property sort of came under our radar. Um, and just a little bit of background about the Trust for Public Land. We're a nonprofit conservation organization with a mission of land for people. So trying to connect people with the land um, and foster that connection between 
um, you know, the environment and, and people. And we broke off from the Nature Conservancy in about 1972. We've been in Connecticut since 1986. I work at the New Haven office. We've actually protected about 93 properties um, and 7,600 acres with a fair market value of about $150 million. Um, that's just here in Connecticut. And we've done several projects in the past with the town of Simsbury, including Ethel Walker and the Simsbury Meadows. Uh, next slide. So uh, just to give everyone a point of uh, reference, this is the, uh, my on mute. This is the Meadowwood development. It's a residential uh, development. It was 296 homes. It was approved by the courts in 2008. The approvals are valid through March 20th, uh, 2022. Um, just one note that 88 of the 96 homes were deed restricted affordable units. Um, go to the next slide. As part of the 2008 settlement, there was an environmental cleanup that occurred. Um, the site was cleaned in accordance with the approved plan by the courts. Uh, the town has, has engaged the services of a licensed environmental professional to review the file to inspect the site. Really, it's just doing our due diligence um, because all of the corrective actions or cleaning, cleanup or mediation was completed. Um, does anyone have any questions about the, the project's history or anything like that? Uh, I just want to be clear about the 88 that are restricted Mm -hmm. Is the language of restriction the same as the Hoskins Road thing and 80 Climax Road? Yes. Same? Okay. Deed restricted affordable units. All right. So affordable has the same definition then in all three areas. Hoskins, yeah. 80 Climax in here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's all yours, Honor. Thanks, Mike. Um, so this is a map of the property that you're seeing on your screen for those of you um, on Zoom. It's about 288 acres that TPL um, has a contract to purchase. It abuts McLean Game Refuge to the south um, and the Mexico State Forest to the north. It would create a connected trail network between those two large conservation lands um, with, you know, McLean is significant in size and Massico, I think, you know, all three together would, you know, surpass 5,000 acres of conservation land. Um, and so uh, we have secured a contract on the entire to purchase the entire property. And throughout the rest of the slides, I'll sort of go over the various components of this conservation outcome. Next slide. So the reason that the Trust for Public Land was um, really interested in seeing this through um, was one, our Land for People mission. This would you know, create an outdoor recreation opportunity for the people of Simsbury and throughout the state. It has significant historical and cultural resources, being the farm where Martin Luther King um, you know, lived near and worked in his two summers in Connecticut, which you know, is, is not only locally significant, but really, I mean, regionally and statewide and you know, almost nationally significant. We have done a number of projects um, regarding around the Martin Luther King story, his childhood home. Um, and, you know, we're working on some others in the meantime in other states. But anyway, that that's really appealing to us because we can connect, you know, a sort of the an important cultural resource right here in Connecticut that, um, you know, it's it's could be lost otherwise. So we think that's significant. There's a, a really good story around the community trails and new access there. It has really good agricultural soils. And so part of the project is focused around maintaining those soils and keeping it in agriculture, um, you know, with a town ownership, but um, continued farming. It's connectivity, which I already talked about. Um, and then there's a small portion of the property, about 24 acres, which would be potentially reserved by the town, you know, unencumbered by any easements or anything that would allow them to have future athletic fields if that need um, arises in the in the future for, you know, if they see that it's it's a good location. Um, they they want to keep their options open with that site and you know it, it seems like good planning to do so. 
And then um, preserving some of the historic uh, tobacco barns on the property, um, that's, that sort of goes along with the project and the, the cultural sites here. You know, we want to preserve the landscape sort of as it was during Martin Luther King Jr.'s time. And part of that is these, these iconic tobacco barns that, that line the road and sort of provide a scenic and bucolic um, image for the town. Next slide. Before you go on, could I just yeah. ask a question? I, I sure. should have raised this earlier, but your reference in the last slide to the, uh, the connectivity between the McLean Game Refuge and the Masako um, Forest or the Masako Conservation Forest or something you remember. Where is the Masako Conservation property? Sorry, yeah, it, I guess it's Masako. I, I've been calling it Masako, but it's... That's all right. Direct- That's all right. Where is it? It's Great Pond. Um, Great oh, Pond oh, is actually a, a I got it. part of Massacre. Yeah, great. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. So, so the landowner contract that TPL has, uh, it's with Griffin Industrial, and they're here on the call today, too. Um, as most of you probably know, it's permitted for 296 units. Um we have a purchase price set at six million, which is a bargain sale. Um, we have until February of 21, 2021 to close with an option for a six month extension if needed. Um, and, you know, part of, part of TPL's contract is, you know, we, we need to have the town consider the fact that they may need to do some permit renewals for their subdivision. Um, they're, you know, being generous and giving us a year, up to a year and a half to put this together. And, and you know, we said, you know, we don't want them to be penalized for giving us such a long time frame to close. And so part of that, you know, that sort of leads to what Griffin, you know, may come before the, the various land use commissions um, to propose in the future. Next slide. So as as you'll see on the next slide, it's sort of a phased conservation outcome. There's 138 acres of open space where we're planning on applying to the DEP Open Space and Watershed Land Acquisition Grant Program, along with the Highlands Conservation Act to and the town of Simsbury to fund that portion. Um, 24 acres reserved for athletic fields, 117 acres with a farmland easement um, by Department of Ag that would allow for future farming while um, encumber the property and restrict it from development. And then three acres sort of excluded from all these areas just to protect those barns. Um, the, a lot of the easement programs and funding sources that we work with don't really want structures um, in, in their easement area. And so the town would sort of just own those areas outright and be able to you know, sort of maintain and operate them freely without the easements. Uh, Next slide. So you can see the distinct areas here. Um, I I know it's pretty small for those of you on laptop like me, um, but the the open space areas are those sort of to the south of Firetown Road and then extending north towards McLean. The farmland preservation component is that piece on the east side And the future athletic fields are that little square cutout that um, is on Hoskins Road. And so, you know, there's lots of moving parts here, um, but the the capital funding for this, um, and this has been updated since these slides. So I'll just go over them pretty quickly, but feel free to jump in with questions. But we're looking to to have the town contribute about 2.2 million, uh, 2.175. We are applying to the DEP open space. They will fund up to 65% of uh, the fair market value. So I have sort of, I have 820,000 here. We will probably apply for more, but the likelihood that we get over a million dollars, you know, it's pretty slim. It's a competitive program. They wanna fund all the open space that they can. And so I've been a little bit conservative with um, my numbers from the federal and state funding sources. Uh, 600,000 will actually come from 
the Highlands Conservation Act. It says the Land and Water Conservation Fund, but we've been working with the state on sort of finessing this budget and feel that that's um, the better funding source. Um, one point, I lost the slides, but off the top of my head, about one point, uh, Four or five from Department of Ag. I know, I think it says 1.75 there, but we've actually reduced that um, because we've we've already been pretty successful with some of our funding sources. We were just told that um, we are getting $280,000 from the George Dudley Seymour Trust, which is a private trust that uh, grants um, significantly to projects it finds very compelling. And this one they found very compelling. And so we are getting money from them for acquisition. Uh, we were just given the award letter today that we're receiving 800,000 from the State Historic Preservation Office, which is a branch of the Department of Economic um, and Community Development, uh, so a state agency. 500 of that, as noted on here, is for acquisition, and 300 will be for barn restoration, interpretive um, displays, signage, um, you know, res basically maintaining, restoring those barns as, as much as possible, and then um, and putting in trails where they need to be, parking areas, you know, accessibility, things like that. Um, and then there's 150,000 from the sale of a private lot that um, Griffin or has actually already had an option with this landowner for a long time now, and um, we'll be honoring honoring that um, and selling them that that small piece that's basically abuts their backyard. And so that's six million is sort of the total capital that we need to put together. Um, like I said, we've put together over a million um, at this point. Um, and then, you know, we to cover our project costs, we have a campaign of about 460000 um, That is all of the costs that are incurred by TPL um, for to put this together. There's, as you can see, a lot of different grants, uh, a lot of time. We also raise money um, for program reinvestment. So, when we fundraise for our costs in Simsbury and we do a project in Simsbury, it's at the cost of fundraising elsewhere, doing projects elsewhere. And so it's sort of an equity line item that we, we raise money to put back into our program here in Connecticut. Um, and so that's sort of the breakdown of, of the monies. Well, and, yeah. I have a couple questions, but sure. just on that final point though, the, um, the, when it refers to fundraising campaign, that campaign is expected to be done, accomplished in Simsbury. Is that what you're trying to say? No. So, so we raise money um, everywhere, but it, it's it's for this project, and we will build it into our project budget as we are fundraising. Um, you know, our goal is six point four six million dollars, and so we try and raise that, and we work with you know statewide donors. We have national donors that will care a great deal about this this as a from its cultural perspective and and it will that's not that's that's private um monies that we'll raise that is not you know municipal or anything like that and, and a, a final, final point from my list of questions the six million dollars that that doesn't speak to the cost to renovate or restore barns build athletic fields and anything else we might want to do there that's all separate from the six million, right? That's right. That is the okay. purchase price, right? So there is um, some monies built into our budget that are for project management of overseeing the barn restoration and maintenance, and that money will come from the state historic preservation office. In terms of you know preparing the fields for the athletic fields and things like that. What we're really hoping to do is is leverage the the other public monies, so deep open space, Highlands Conservation Act, and allow the town's contribution to be a little bit less, so that they can then you know have some monies put towards those things that you just mentioned. So, you know what we what we do is we go to the town and say you know we need you to contribute two point two million. Hopefully, you know, the, the money that actually goes to the purchase price is a little bit less if we're really successful. 
Um, sometimes, you know, it takes all 2.2, but, you know, hopefully we can, we can make a really compelling case and, and get, you know, closer to our target and use less municipal money. But we, we put down conservative numbers here for, to sort of a cushion. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so Simsbury action items. So, the process that we're in right now is going to the land use commissions. We we originally took this um, to the board of selectmen, and they unanimously supported it and put it to the commissions to sort of you know essentially put back to them. Um, it, and we have been the open space committee unanimously supported it. And the Historic District Commission supported it unanimously. unanimously and the Planning Commission um, is going to put it to a vote uh, at their next meeting on the 23rd. They wanted some economic information, which I'm trying to pull together. And so the process of going through all the land use commissions will then allow the Board of Selectmen to put it to voters um, and likely in November. So we have requested, the, the town has requested technical assistance um, that deals with some conservation finance and lobbying laws. And so that is completed. We have a memorandum of understanding with the town that outlines our roles and responsibilities, who does what, who pays for what. Um, and so the next item, uh, you know, I would let Griffin speak to a little bit more, but essentially, you know, all these land use commissions will at some point potentially be looking at um, a permit renewal by Griffin, which will you know, give TPL the time to put together the conservation outcome and not penalize them, as I mentioned. And then finally, you know, collaborating with the town and TPL um, on due diligence, the survey, the environmental, the appraisals, um, there's a lot of moving parts here. It's gonna take a lot of coordination and and we'll be working hand in hand with the town as our partner to, to get all these things done um, so that we can effectively close on the property um, within our contract. Uh, next slide, or is that the last slide, Mike? That's that's the last slide. And actually that right. probably, get, that gives us a good uh, segue into the discussion with um, Griffin Land and their permit renewals, Great. which is direct, related to this conservation um, referral. So, is is Tim? Yes, Tim or Mike? Hi, it's Tim Luskily here. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Um, so, I guess the first question is a point of order. Are we all set agenda wise to have to have a discussion, or is there anything to be done there? You're, you're all set. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, well, hello everybody. Um, my name is Tim Luskely. I'm the Senior Vice President for Griffin Industrial Realty, which is the parent company to the, the entity which uh, is Riverbend, um, the owner of, of the project known as Meadowood and the land that, that, it, it, that it encompasses. Um, uh, we have uh, Pat Naples and Tim Hollister here from Shipman and Goodwin um, that would be able to uh, answer questions that you have as well as they're going to walk you through what we're actually asking for. I just wanted to set the table um, both um, uh, just to provide a little background. It's been it's been a very um, interesting and satisfying process so far working with Honor and the Trust for Public Land uh, in trying to come up with something here that would be a, a three way win. And as far as uh, as I'm concerned, as we're concerned, um, Griffin has been involved in land preservation efforts elsewhere. Um, we sold development rights to the Department of Agriculture in East Windsor, as well as Suffield over the past 10 years. Uh, and we've also uh, been contributors to the Trust for Public Land and other efforts that they've had elsewhere in the state. Um, so uh, this is something that came about really organically, I would say. Um, we had a, a meeting uh, early on with respect to just land parcels in general within our portfolio. We still own a few thousand acres within the state of Connecticut. Um, and the subject came up of Meadowood and uh, they, they inquired about it. And we said, if you'd like to take a crack at it, you know, go ahead and put something together, let us know what you think. 
and they've submitted something and things just started working from there. So, you know, we're, ha we're happy that we're at this point. Um, it's been over a year in the making so far. Um, and uh, honors already queued it up in terms of what is before you and, and, and the history of the process so far with the town. Um, and with that, I think I'll leave it to Tim and Pat to just explain what it is that, that mechanically is uh, necessary to accommodate our, our concerns, but also to administer what it is that's being uh, requested at this point. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Pat Naples here of Shipman and Goodwin. I'm joined by my colleague, Tim Hollister, uh, on behalf of Griffin Industrial. Happy to be with everyone here tonight. And just to begin, I think it's important to underscore what Honor said, what Tim has said, which is that the idea from Griffin's perspective is to get this project done and closed within a sufficient amount of time that we don't need to worry about the expiration of Griffin's outstanding permits, um, which is not until March of 2022. So again, goal here is that the time deadlines that are currently existing in the permits don't come into play and this deal closes um, before we have to worry about that. That said, Griffin does have outstanding approvals and uh, wants to be able, wants to be sure that it's able to protect its interest in those outstanding approvals, especially given that Griffin has uh, expended significant time, effort, and money in reliance upon those approvals. And so Griffin, um, if the time should come uh, that the deal is taking longer than is expected or doesn't doesn't seem as though it may go through, may need to apply for renewals of those permit applications. Um, and those would be new permit applications that would essentially be seeking a renewal of the existing permits along the same lines. And again, given the outstanding permits and what Griffin has done in reliance on those permits, it believes that it would be entitled to those. So not seeking a permit extension um, or a renewal tonight um, or in the near future, but when we were coming before the commission and putting forward this entire effort, we want it to be clear. We've talked with town attorney Bob DiCrescenzo. We spoke with the planning commission last week, and we just wanted to be upfront about what our plan was for the property in its entirety moving forward. And we're happy to answer any questions that uh, any members of the commission may have for us on that front tonight. So thank you. So I guess for the commission, you have the two, you have the two things. One was the preliminary kind of, they're giving you the, the, the courtesy heads up that should uh, discussions or, or, or um, funding does not occur with this project, you may see them in the near future for their permit renewals, which Pat is correct. We, we met uh, town staff, Bob Crescenzo and uh, legal team for um, Griffin land met and discussed this subject. We felt, we wanted the commissions to be aware that this pos there's a, a possibility that the renewals may come in um, so that you weren't surprised in, let's say, six to eight months from now. But also you have before you um, the referral from the Board of Selectmen. So they're looking for your feedback and input on the uh, potential purchase from the conservation perspective. But you have everyone here, TPL, if you have any questions, um, Griffin Land, if you would like to hear more about their permit renewals, but really we're just looking for um, an action on your referral to the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mike, in the question of the extension of the existing approval, uh, is that a zoning approval or a zoning and planning? So, so as part of the uh, as part of the approvals back in 2008, and in Tim Hollister, you could you can correct me if I'm wrong, or or uh, Pat, a a permit for a subdivision approval was was approved, a approval for uh, the wetlands commission or conservation, and a site plan was approved by this commission. So that's why that they may the reason why they may trigger a renewal from this commission because a site plan was approved. Um, so that's where, you know, when they say, 
and they're saying renewals. Um, I think, it, I think just to get backtrack too is so the court approved the development in 2008. Um, and the clock started ticking from there. The statute was, was changed in 2008 to provide a relief that was greater than what was otherwise allotted to, uh, uh approvals. Normally you, you have a site plan that's approved. You have five years to complete the work, which could be extended for another five. Um, because of the Great Recession in 2008, they gave everyone nine-year approvals, which could be extended for up to 14 years. So Meadowood, if you, if you recall, I think it was about two years ago, came before this commission, requested full extensions um, to the 14 years. So, and that was, like I said, for this, this commission, it was the site plan that was approved. Um, Thank you. So, well, what are we talking about now then? If they, it's 14 years from 2008? Yes, that's the current, the current uh, permits that are valid. So what you have before you really is the one, is the referral from the Board of Selectmen. That's what really you're getting an action for. The I understand potential- that, Mike, but I'm trying to have the fuller context here. The material that we were given in advance of this meeting had several references to the Board of Finance having interest in a referendum in November, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm trying to understand what, what action is necessary between now and November. Or why don't we just wait till November and see how the referendum goes? Bruce, we have, we don't have to take action unless they ask us to extend their site plan approval. Um, that's all we're asking for. The Planning Commission gets to pass on the advisability of a capital expenditure. And then the Board of Selectmen are the people that buy for the town, and they have to go to the Board of Finance and a referendum to get it approved. And if they did all of that by November and all the other stuff was done, they wouldn't come back to us for the extension of the site plan. Well, that's what I was trying to understand. So we're not going to be pressed to give extensions until after that late fall event. Well, it depends on how things go from here on out, too. I mean, yeah, right. Okay. Things could things could change. Things are happening quite a bit right now that are. Uh, roiling the waters for a lot of things uh, yeah. between the COVID and the and the um, things that are going on. Yeah. People asking questions about whether or not our zoning regulations uh, are are uh, racist in character and whether they need to be changed. Uh, a lot of people are asking questions like: Is, is single-family zoning acceptable? Are we doing enough in terms of affordable housing? Right. Um, anyway, so there's a lot of questions, and perhaps some of the other people. Yeah, I get it. Can, can but on, on this deal for six million dollars, are we acquiring the development rights, or we're acquiring title to that property? Yes. So this is honor. I'll answer that. the The six million dollars is the purchase price of the fee simple, so the entire property. The way that we fund that is through title to the property right fee simple the town will own the underlying fee it will 95 percent of the property would be encumbered by various easements whether deep open space or department of ag agricultural easements so it would prohibit development um the town in in terms of the farmland portion the town would own the farmland it would either lease it or um you know they could put community gardens there. There's there's a number of things that the town could decide to do with that property that would fall within the rights of um, the town as it's encumbered by an agricultural easement. Um, with the open space portion, the open space component would require public access and trails. And so the town would own that underlying fee. The state of Connecticut would have the easement that would um, basically say that there had to be public access, there has to be trails, there has to be the preservation of wildlife habitat, things like that. And so, but at the end of the day, the town would be the owner of the the property. Thank you. Thank you. Other people have questions. Uh, Mike? Comments? 
Donna, Ann? Um, I just have one question I'm not sure of. So the 14 year extension, Mike, was that the last available extension? So we're not actually looking at another extension, we're looking at a new approval or I, I don't, I'm not understanding that. So if they need the, it. I, I understand they don't yeah. need it yet. So, so the law, the law that as of right under the Connecticut law, they had uh, 14 years from 2008. So they have they have their permits in hand. They've right. already secured the uh, the appropriate extensions. They've they've received the maximum uh, extensions that are permitted under statute. So then, the if we go the, beyond what, that, they're going to come in for what's called a permit renewal. So in theory, it's a new application. However, right. um, it, it's really it's it's the same application that's already been approved by all the various land use commissions. And what they only want for that approval, what they've said to us is 18 months, just so that so that in that interim, as they're going through it, as TPL is securing the finances, the permits don't expire. Okay. Hi, everybody. This, this is Tim Hollister. Um, I was the one that got the original approvals back in 2008, and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I've been trying to keep quiet, but let me just underscore the what Mike has just said. It, Griffin Land has already spent millions of dollars, not only on environmental remediation, but also on the infrastructure to support the residential development. The only thing they haven't done is to start to build houses. So that under the law, and we've discussed this with Bob D. Crescenzo, as, as my colleague Pat Naples said, if for some reason the deal with Trump trust for public land were to fall through over the next 18 to 24 months, Griffin land would be entitled to seek a permit, seek and receive a permit renewal. That said, uh, and I think this is the key point for tonight's proceeding is we want the deal to go through well before we have to deal with that. And that's, uh, and if the, um, if the deal goes through, we'll never have to deal with a permit extension renewals or any of that type of issue. Okay, now we we need to think about what we want to say to the Board of Selectmen as opposed to details about this uh, particular deal. So if there are questions for the uh, TPL or Griffin, we should make sure we address those. And then we can start talking about what we should respond to the Board of Selectmen with. Um, First question in my mind is this approval what was done in 2008, the remediation was done sometime after that. Um, it was a few years, wasn't it? They completed the remediation actions in 2014. Okay, so for the last six years, it hasn't been economically sensible for them to proceed, apparently. That that really true, Tim. You're the guy that well, two Tims, aren't we? Well, <laughs> yeah, the, Tim the, Leskely the, is the guy who's responsible for that. Yeah. for that. There are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, you know, not, not just there are a lot of moving pieces to this uh, this puzzle, and I'm not sure it's any one one reason. Uh, you know, there was the uh, discussion of alternative uses and so forth. But um, I know Tim, Tim Leslie, I'm not sure you would put your finger on any one particular reason why you did it before the residential piece. It's been a few different things. I mean, cer certainly part of it has been due to, you know, post 2008 and the, and the housing recovery since then. Um, we also, you know, the remediation, completion of the remedi remediation was not necessarily the final final permit. We were held up for quite a while with the Army Corps and securing our final general permits for for um, what was a voluntary remediation uh, wetland replacement um, on site, which is part of the agreement that we made with the town in the, in the settlement agreement, is that we would uh, replace wetland soils in an area and that pulled us into the jurisdiction of the Army Corps of Engineers and that took quite a while to get through. Uh, that, too is, that too is complete. Um, so, you know, as Tim mentioned, we do have everything that we need to, to 
apply for a building permit to, to proceed. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, you know, we entered into this agreement, uh, you know, started discussions with this particular transaction about a year over a little over a year ago. Um, you know, ironically, the market is, has been coming back and, you know, it, it, it could very well be something that could still be developed going forward. Um, but, you know, we, we have committed to do this deal and we want to see this deal through, you know, that being said, you know, as, as, as what's been mentioned, um, there's, there's permits that are underpinning this transaction as well as underpinning the value of the project to us going forward in the future. So if we're going to, you know, take this project essentially offline for you know, 18 months to 24 months to see if the Trust for Public Land can, uh, can perform its magic and, and get everybody aligned and the funding aligned to make this work, uh, we are fine with doing that provided that we still have a project that is permitted should it not go forward. And, that, and that's, that's, the, that's the key point. We get caught up in the mechanics of how this, is gonna, how this has to happen um, you know, should it, should we have to come forward to apply? And the distinction being this is, it wouldn't be an extension of permits because we don't have any extensions left under our current permits, but we do have, uh, as Tim Hollister had mentioned, uh, the ability and the right to apply for a renewal of the permits, given the, the investments that we have made since the project has been permitted. So it's, you know, what, what lies out there might be, you know, fallow land, but it's not like we haven't been busy behind the scenes doing what we can to try to move things forward. Well, the reason, the reason that I'm asking the question is that, you know, yesterday's Sunday's current had a big story about how um, the towns and state are not implementing affordable housing at anywhere near the rate that's acceptable to the people that are making those uh, statements and that here we are uh, considering a situation where we're proposing to eliminate doing affordable housing uh, and create open space, more open space in Simsbury. And it seems to me that at the current point, the optics of that, as political people would say, are, are pretty bad. If I could just answer that, um, you know, I think, you know, you're spot on. That's that's true. Lots of towns are, you know, have stonewalled affordable housing to, you know, with the sort of guise of important habitat and open space. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think this is that. This is about protecting a place that is incredibly important to, you know, the African-American community and the American civil rights movement. And I think, you know, that story will carry this project. And, you know, I don't think we're, you know, we don't want to, we of course don't want to stonewall affordable housing in Simsbury and prevent minorities and, you know, lower income people from being able to live there. But I think the story is more about preserving this really important cultural legacy and, and sort of the, everything that goes along with it. And I, you know, I, I have a feeling that that will, will hold merit and, and be a big success at the end of this thing. Um, so. Okay, but I, I would like to hear from the other commissioners who have to make a response to the Board of Selectmen. And uh, what do you guys think? Well, I have the same, I'm, I'm gonna piggyback momentarily on something that you raised, Dave, and that when I look at the plan of conservation and development, and as we all know, this is a zoning commission, this is not the planning commission, but they published in 2017, a 10-year plan for the town of Simsbury. And it calls for that site, the 280 acres, to be developed as specialty residential. And now we have in front of us or emerging a plan to do something different than that. And not only that, but to take two point something million dollars, plus we don't know what in the future and invest it there. That, that's not part of the plan of the, of the town of Simsbury, the 10-year plan that we're in right now. So. I guess I'm surprised, I guess, uh, at where we, we find ourselves right now, but I'm not sure what the planning commission is gonna feed back. Um, I guess I'm anxious about the whole thing. Any more comments, Donna? 
Melissa, yeah. Melissa has something to say. Mm -hmm. Melissa's not seated at this point, but I guess she can speak. Go ahead, Melissa. So my question is, as a zoning alternate, I know I'm not allowed to speak as a commissioner right now. Am I allowed to speak as a member of the public at a public hearing portion? We're not, we're not having a public hearing. We're discussing a response to the Board of Selectmen. So, but go ahead and say what you want to say. Okay. Um, I, I think that there are a number of really important, policy-wise, a number of really important um, factors for Simsbury that are coming together uh, in this project. And I don't know that it needs to be an all or nothing. It may need to be an all or nothing for the public trust or for the developer. Um, but I find it hard to believe that all of the property that we're talking about preserving as historic for Martin Luther King's legacy, I don't think that all of that property um, is really critical to, to his historical legacy. Um, and if anything, you know, I'm certainly not Dr. King and I'm certainly not uh, presupposing, you know, to think what he would have thought. But I think that affordable legacy is exactly the legacy that he, affordable housing is the legacy that that he would have wanted to leave here. Um, and we're facing facing a, a huge financial crisis in our town. So while this is the zoning commission and our job is to look at whether uh, we would view favorably the the developers permit uh, extensions in the future or renewal in the future. I think that as members of, of Simsbury, um, as citizens here, as taxpayers here, as, as people who are looking to carry on um, the civil rights work that was begun by Martin Luther King, I think that we need to consider all of those factors. Thank you. Thank you. Ann, you've been quiet. <laughs> um, well, I sat through this presentation once before because I was at the um, open spaces uh, meeting a week or two ago, um, in which case I believe you already mentioned that um, the open space committee um, passed, uh, gave its approval, gave its sanctions to this project um, for it to go forward. Um, and that they felt that it was um, pretty much as it was a wonderful, their quote was, it was a wonderful opportunity for the town. And um, they unanimously supported the acquisition. To me personally, I, I'm a conservationist and I open space person. So the idea, the ability to be able to piggyback land to the McLean Refuge and all that goes with it, along with the recreation, I think is very important. And I think it's something we need to consider and, and take into account. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, you haven't said Mike Doyle. No comments from Mike Doyle. Sorry, I'm figuring, trying to figure out how to unmute my uh, my microphone. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think this is a very unique opportunity. Um, and as others have mentioned, it, it may or may not be an all or nothing deal. But, uh, you know, I, I I applaud the opportunity for others or for us to be able to look at this property and one potentially conserve, but also, you know, uh, the opportunity to, to have a, a neat part of town where Martin Luther King uh, worked here in town is just incredible. Uh, and the ability to be able to preserve some of that is really cool. Thank you. Kevin, you hadn't said anything yet. Well, I keep going in and out of this this meeting. Um, I would say that this is is one of the last large parcels um, that is available to preserve, and you know it's uniquely situated between uh, McLean and um, Masako. Um, so I do think it's significant, and I also think it's significant that we would be saving, um, you know, preserving farmland. It's some rich farmland there, um, in addition to the open space for uh, the animal corridors. So I think it would be a good idea to, for the town to acquire this this property, and I'd be in favor of a motion to the uh, board of selectmen in favor of it. Mr. Chairman, let me, Jim, let me say that um, my first comment is the town's the town's experience with running farmland, uh, managing farmland, is not is not really good. We rented it out, um, but anyway, be that as it may. Um, I think that we perhaps could re reply to the Board of Selectmen uh, with a statement that 
we think it's appropriate for Griffin Land to ask for a renewal of their permit, a re reissue of their permit, should that be necessary. Um, that that's our sense um, as a zoning commission as to what our responsibilities would be in this issue, and that we are not fully in agreement with um, a statement on whether or not they should, the town should buy the property. That's yes. In my mind, that's a, that's a fair statement. And that what we are willing to, and I think you said it, Dave, but permit for us is a extension of the site plan permit. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. The site plan permit. That's it. Right. And so the response so that if our board of selectmen members, I'm not sure they understand what the focus is of the zoning commission, but just so there isn't any question, I think that the feedback should be specific to that issue, very specific to that issue. And not to the other question of, is it a good okay. deal for the town? All right, why don't... May I have, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, sure. Um, and Tim, feel free to jump in here, but it seems to me that in listening to this this discussion, um, what's being talked about is is a little bit uh, of a merging of two different things. It's my understanding the Board of Selectmen referred this uh, transaction with the Trust for Public Land to to the Zoning Commission so that it could get its uh, requesting that it evaluate it. And, and, and send back a positive ne or negative or I guess neutral response with respect to whether or not the transaction is worthwhile. Our discussion about a permit renewal does not require any sort of positive or negative response. We'd certainly love for you to say something like that back to the commission that yes, we think that that's appropriate. But I don't want there to be any confusion that what we're asking for here is, is anything more or what's being asked for you is anything more than a response that with respect to the zoning commission's responsibilities under the referral. That being said, our request or our discussion with you about um, a potential future renewal of our permits is something that is really um, germane to the transaction that we have with, with the Trust for Public Land. Um, it is a contingency, if you will, uh, that, you know, should something not, should this transaction not proceed, we can't be in a position where we're left without any time to continue with this project. And so therefore our reason for coming before you early on, as Pat had mentioned, is to really be full disclosure that, look, this is part of a means of making this all work for everybody. The permanent value of the project is underpinning what the trust for public land can assemble in terms of its capital in order to purchase the rights and, and for the town to purchase the property. Um, it, is, it is also underpinning the value that we place on the project going forward. So we certainly can't lose our value if the trust for public land not proceed with the transaction. So that's, that's the impetus for coming before you now. You know, the board of selectmen made a request for us, and our response to them is what we're considering now. And I, 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 I understand. Yeah, I understand. I just want to make sure that that that, that they weren't being misconstrued as, as being the same. It, it's just it, no. We, it's, not our intention, it's not our intention to go to request that you consider this as part of your referral. This is really. Question is zoning. Uh, right, and we're the zoning commission. The zoning, and the, the zoning commission does not pass uh, in our town on capital improvements. The planning commission handles that, and so our role in this, in telling the zoning or telling the selectmen what we think is, I think, should be limited to what our zoning responsibilities are. Uh, but Dave. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. This is 
Isn't part of our zoning responsibilities providing affordable housing in the town of Simsbury? Providing the opportunity to develop. I mean, this is the largest group of affordable housing that's been yes, proposed. And I think what, what we said, what I said earlier was we think that should it come to extending that or renewing that permit, the town, we as a body, the six of us, think that that's a good idea. Um, but as, um, I don't think, from what I heard, that there is a majority of the people who want to vote to approve or to agree with this acquisition or a, a majority of people who don't want to achieve. I think we disagree on whether we should go forward with that or not. But I don't think a vote of the, of the zoning commission is appropriate. Mr. Chairman, uh, Tim Hollister, if, yes, if I may, I, I don't think it's correct from a historical perspective to think about the, the consideration that you have tonight as a choice between honoring Martin Luther King's legacy and promoting affordable housing versus preserving open space. The, the truth is, and I've been working on this matter since 1999, I was a young lawyer when this started, <laughs> um, you know, we worked on it from 1999 until the settlement in 2008. The settlement came just in time for the market to crash. Um, and that's nobody's fault, but it, it is a fact that we worked on a plan that we thought was perfect for the market. And then the, when we got there, the market wasn't there. And it, even when the, when the market started to show signs of life in 2012, 2013, Tim Luskalit and his colleagues worked very hard over the succeeding years to try to put together a package of financing and construction financing and infrastructure financing to make it work. And the re sad reality is they just were not able to do it with this plan in this location at this time. And that's not, not certainly not for lack of trying. Then as Tim Leskalit explained, the Trust for Public Land said, essentially, we have an opportunity to re really repurpose the land uh, in, in, a, in a different way. So I, I Frank, you know, I, no one is more invested in the approvals than I am, but I, I think you can proceed to endorse, to report back to the Board of Selectmen that the deal between Griffin Land and the Trust for Public Land is a good deal for the town of Simsbury and obviously- Tim, so, so it's not your opinion that we're trying you know, to get, sorry. What we're trying to do is to get whether or not the board of select the zoning commission wants to make wants to have a vote on this i, I think i can ask all you zoning commission members do you want to vote on whether it's a good deal or not or do you want to tell the board of selectmen that we think that we would be in favor of, of doing what is needed from the zoning commission perspective and that is uh, should it come to extending their permit, we think our sense is that we would agree with that, but that we're not in full agreement on the deal as it stands. Well, I, I don't, I don't, as Tim was. Excuse I, me, please. Okay. Tony Commissioner. I'm in agreement with the summary statement you just made, Dave, but. Um, um, well, let me let it go with that. I'm in agreement with the perspective that you just summarized. Okay, I think we have, if I'm counting correctly, you, me, and perhaps Donna, who have some concerns about this deal, and Mike, Kevin, and uh, Anne, who think the deal is okay. Um, if we propose a motion that will fail three to three, now, do you want to do that? I don't okay. think well, I'll, I'll make a motion to to make the um, we'll put Donna on the spot here. Uh, but I, I will move that the zoning commission um, makes a positive referral to the, the board of selectmen in favor of the open space acquisition at the Meadow Woods site, and that um, if the sale is not successful, we are in favor of extending the site plan approval. Okay, is there a second? Second by Mike. Let's have some more discussion. Anybody want more discussion? Yeah. 
Well, well I, I, excuse me. I'm con I'm just confused. Do we have to? If they're asking for our opinion, does it have to be a one or the other? Or can we say we think it's a wonderful opportunity for open space, but at the same time we have a concern about affordable housing? Can we just throw those two issues out there and, and raise them? Or do we have to vote one or the other? Well, I mean, Kevin's, Kevin's motion was one all one way or another. Right. Uh, what I had been suggesting earlier was more like what you're saying is that uh, there are some people who believe it's a good idea, and there are some people who believe that we should be more concerned with affordable housing. Um, but in any case, however, it takes out, we would be willing to um, move. We think we should move forward if it came to that. On the extension of the permit. That's a different thing than what Kevin said. And uh, unless Kevin wants to change his motion, um, then we have to vote on that motion if we're through the discussion. As a point not to lose sight of, we, we have, I mean, I think that's an immense decision to encourage the Board of Selectmen to go forward on what we know now. We don't know anything about what we're giving up. And I know, we all know this, that there's no free lunch in this world. When we say, on a, on just on the surface of this thing, we're going to take two point something million dollars that would otherwise have gone to other capital projects that are going to get either not funded or deferred. Well, what pain is there in that deferral or that non-funding of capital projects? Because the money's getting used for this. And what do we do for a substitute plan for addressing uh, affordable housing in Simsbury. Uh, who's thought about that? Not us. We have not thought about that at all tonight. We've just been asked to endorse this according to our presenters, uh, the concept of encouraging the Board of Selectmen to go forward. I think we have a lot more that we should be thinking about before making that our the decision of our commission. Okay, what about what about the thought that that two million dollars be uh, somehow paid to Griffin Land to complete the affordable housing project? Would that change their idea? Anyway, I I, I just don't think we. I don't know. I'm not not feeling good about telling them to go ahead with it. That's all. So, are we prepared to vote? No more discussion, right? Okay, all in favor of Kevin's motion? Aye. Aye. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, opposed? Aye. I'm opposed. Aye. I'm opposed. Aye. Three. Okay, so the motion fails three to three. So our referral back to the Board of Selectmen is that we could not agree that it was something that we would support. Dave, I'll prepare that uh, correspondence for your signature. But I, I, I would also encourage adding the point that we talked about earlier to offer the, that it's likely we would support extending the permit for the uh, site plan if needed down the road. Uh, if, I, I think it does, uh, you know, suggest support if, uh, you know, the process leads to moving on this issue. Agreed. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in there. Anybody object to that? Okay. I think we've uh, reached our end on this. Do you have anything else, Mike? So, so I just want to give the board a heads up. Friday, FEMA released the new maps, new flood maps. We will uh, be, we'll try to upload those to the website, but there are new ma draft flood maps. Um, there has been some changes. So if, you know, anyone who 
lives adjacent or in a flood uh, hazard, please take a look at the maps because your lenders will be checking these. Thank you. Can we hear a motion to adjourn? I'll move that we adjourn. Bruce. Thank you. I'll second. 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 Mike was too slow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Have a good Thank night. Nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it was a good discussion.